a high school in mathematics, so-called, and physics. So we had to choose even okay. the discipline, even not only at university, when we from the high, uh, school. high school, the first year of high school. So I did math and physics. Okay. And then, uh, of course, my goal was to be a professor, to be honest. And then, you know, here Since I am that early? from that early. So I built it up. <laughs> so anyways, I did the entrance examination and then I got to chemical engineering, which was my interest. And um, so anyways, I did my bachelor's degree, undergraduate in chemical engineering, followed by master's and followed by PhD. So I did... Um, a uh, lot of research after my undergraduate. And I did undergraduate um, research on um, uh, production of polymers because I had an internship. And after that, I did my master's on the uh, modification of a, actually a plant that they were producing licorice. And then I had to redesign the whole thing. And then they got a lot of profit. <laughs> And okay. anyways, in the master's level, because it was an industrial project. So my supervisor, you know, introduced it to me. Then I was waiting to move to Canada, of course, and do my PhD. And then when I started doing my PhD, it was interesting. So um, I took the first course, I remember, statistics okay, in engineering. So at the University of Waterloo. And actually, my uh, professors, uh, because there were two professors teaching statistics in engineering. It was of a uh, former dean, uh, Professor Tom Dover, oh, okay. and Professor Riley, God bless his soul, he died because he was even a supervisor, I think, of uh, Dr. Do Tom Dover, who was our uh, previous dean. Mm. And then I was challenged. I said, I never... So this is the interesting story. I never took a statistics during my undergraduate or grad okay. uh, master. And all of a sudden, I'm exposed to statistics. So then I'm a newcomer to Canada. I'm a newcomer, you know, to the program and to statistics. So what should so I everything do? Is new. Everything is new. <laughs> so anyways, that was a big challenge. Okay. So, and then I started learning the uh, preamble, you know, undergrad level, basic statistics and all these things. And I did really well, you know, at the end of the course. And then guess what? So I but got... I know that Tom Dover is a little bit tough in his teaching. Or oh, yeah, he's... of course. Yeah. Oh, really? And then Tom, Tom, <laughs> like... no, no, he's a good teacher, but but he's he's a good good professor in yes. terms of teaching. But the thing is, um, I got interested in this area. So okay. both of them, yes, because they, um, you know, um, they I don't know for some reason they both they taught this course, and then I got interested in my project because my project which I did it in. Uh, photocatalysis for cleaning water, wastewater. Well, we get to that later on. So because it was involved with some statistical yeah. design analysis, things like that. So then I got involved with Professor Riley, who also one of the professors in the statistics. And then I went deep and deep and deep. So I published my first paper in the statistics. No. <laughs> so in, in, in chemical engineering. Engine, well, related to that, but, but more this, focus on okay. statistics. So published in Chemical Engineering Science, which is one of the Lots top journals journal, yeah. in, in chemical engineering. So uh, because we developed some models, some equation, things like that. And Professor Riley was surprised, you yeah. know, that the guy is, <laughs> never took a statistics. Now and now he's publishing, publishing, one publishing a paper in Chemical Engineering Science. That's interesting. So that was, that was really a big uh, start for me to... Okay. to to say, of course, you know, there are challenge, there have been challenges, you know, all these things. So um, to the point who's made up, so um, I started my career always with challenges from the beginning, you know. But let's, before we go to the challenges. Yeah. So you mentioned that you, since you were young or high school, you want to be a professor. When did you re realize that and when that point came? Oh, because I was wow. always passionate about teaching. So my goal, oh, okay. passion about teaching and research. So when I did some research, you know, in this area about the job market and things like that, about the future, I thought maybe uh, being a professor can fulfill my uh, okay. desire or, you know, my ambitions to go through this route. And, um, of course, you know, it, it was not easy to get to that route, but it was, it started all with challenges, right? So, well, you know, you need to do grad school and it was limited, you know, 
whether you can get into the school even or, you know, because when I moved to Canada, so I, I, I was not rich, right? So <laughs> not much money and I get, got here, you know. So anyway, so it worked well. So here I am today. And uh, yeah, I will. I will maybe you know. We yeah, can... then let's go back. So yeah, when, let's when go that back, came yes. to your 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 mind that okay, I want to be a professor. So first, when you spoke with your parents, your dad and your mom, how did you tell them, and what was the response? And yeah, well, they were always supportive of this. Okay. You know, to be you know because it's a challenge. Uh, yeah. It's a long journey to be. Uh, yeah, but you know, unfortunately, my parents did not have higher education. You know, okay. in universal level, uh, because they are coming from very old generation. But always, especially you know, both of my parents, they were supportive. You know, that you know whatever you want to do. Especially my dad was telling me always. Uh, your goal should be higher than what you want to achieve. Okay. Set your okay. goal always higher because you never get to the top, but at least you get to 90%, you know? So, and today, even I tell my students, you know, whether I, you know, come to me for advice, I tell them, you know, set your goal as high as possible to reach to at least 90% of that 80%, because it's impossible. The 100% goal is always ideal. <laughs> So yes, they were they were encouraging me and uh, supportive, um, okay. as a matter of fact. So, do you remember anyone from that childhood time other than your parents who pushed you or supported that kind of crazy early idea? Yeah, I know, but it was I wouldn't call it push, but uh, encouraging you know, encouraging my brother, my uh, yeah. Um, my uh, oldest brother, uh, actually, he was uh, he who who did also uh, studied at the university. Uh, he did chemistry, so okay. he was encouraging me. He was always talking about because not directly telling me, but he was indirectly mm -hmm. telling me, you know, um, these, uh, for example, job is this, you know, these engineers okay. are doing this, professors are doing this. This is how the system works. So I got you know to learn a lot from my. Uh, all the brothers so who had the experience okay. to go through this route. So um, he's now retired. But anyways, we, we sometimes we so talk now, about the early days, how tough it was. But So I yes. would assume now he was the, the one that inspired you to join chemical engineering or? Actually, yes. He, he, he was one of the factors. Okay. But I always wanted a discipline to enter that I can, you know, I can be involved with other disciplines as you know chemical engineers so we have a lot of overlaps even with civil engineers you know in environmental aspects with mechanical engineering you know with some other disciplines so there are a lot of overlaps so that's why one of the factors also i got to this okay, i uh, think that he was happy that you yeah of course you went yeah. <laughs> yeah anyways so, so this is the this is the path i took <laughs> So you finished your high school and you joined the uh, university for the chemical engineering. Yes. I think during our undergrad, I always say this is the best time ever in our life during our undergraduate. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, actually, I enjoyed uh, being an undergrad student. And I have a lot of stories to tell you <laughs> in, in undergraduate. We can make another episode for that yes. specifically. Yeah. So um, I can start with an example, but yes. I, I enjoy yeah. undergrad because, you know, I, I really was, um, well, I was the top of the class, first of all, um, in my undergrad. And actually, I, uh, one of my uh, professors who taught me energy and material balance, uh, who I got uh, straightforward, uh, well, uh, 100% on my all exams. So I got 100%. So one day, um, I didn't know that professor is is chasing me uh, or following, I, I would say, following my career Your with past. interest. And then um, I was sitting um, in my office here at TMU, well, uh, before w uh, Ryerson. Okay. And was, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, you know, maybe more. I don't remember the year, but about 10, 15 years ago. And then someone is knocking my door and I looked at my professor, never, you know, his oh. face didn't change that much. He said, wow, uh, his name was Dr. Safe Cordy, you know, and he came and um, I said, wow, where are you? you no, know? I said, of course, I have been following you. I found you wow. and I just wanted to make a surprise. 
and uh, he moment. came with with another friend and uh yes and he taught me um so material energy balance unit operation and a few other courses but uh he said yeah i, I said how he said you are the only one who got 100% <laughs> in my courses in my lifetime oh, really? and i always tell everybody <laughs> And then I wanted to surprise him. I don't know how. I didn't know. And I took a, a exam paper. Old days, you know, it was not computer to yes. type it with computer. Our professors they were writing the exams on um, with hand. So I took a paper with his handwriting. I said, "Can you see this?" I said, "This is the exam for I don't know thirty years ago or I, at the time like twenty years ago. I don't remember exactly." Yeah. And he was surprised. How come you, you still have it? This exam, I said, believe it or not, uh, you know, uh, it was for another course. Uh, and I said, you know, because I've been, uh, you know, uh, following you as well. He is retired right now, but he lives in, the, in Toronto right now. And uh, yeah, I mean, these are some of the examples with interest, which I did my undergraduate. And some professors, you know, they were nice. They were following my career with interest, as a matter of fact. So. I have a few other examples similar to this. So, uh, because I did really, you know, uh, my old generation that we did undergraduate, we did not have exposure, as you know, to yeah. computer. Yeah. It was, the life was not like luxury, like today. <laughs> there was no computer to begin with. Forget about AI. Really? No computer? No well, internet? it was computer, not for assignment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, de definitely no. We had computer. We had to make an appointment, uh, limitation of two hours per week. Oh. To go to the computer so better, and then yeah. do some programming and things like that. Other than that, we didn't have the luxury. Well, in my undergraduate, in my graduate, yeah, we started working, you know, writing the thesis with computer and Word, um, things that not Word. I mean, um, I don't remember the name of no. uh, the program, but anyways, it was a text editing something, and then we similar to Word. DOS, DOS, yeah, and then. Uh, Actually, uh, we did it by hand. Okay. So, a uh, problem, for example, in distillation, that we solve it by Excel these days and very quickly. <laughs> so, it took us to do all these calculations one by one, 50 pages for one problem. So, um, it was completely different than today. Yeah. So, it was more challenging uh, but that's studying. what was training your brain more of than course. nowadays of course <laughs> yeah. and, and i'm happy that we yes. did it but yeah. and uh we used to solve every single problem in the textbook and i have oh. the solution from my old days and these days they now have, are... any book comes with the solution manual and when you compare it everything is perfect actually you know so you were that, that we did yeah okay. so that was the undergraduate so i did my undergraduate really with interest oh, okay and i learned a lot during my undergraduate about chemical engineering how it works that's why i got really interested to continue so the more you learn the more you like to continue